Greetings, greetings, good people. How are y'all doing out there? And today is going to be a great day. Uh, it's about 3 a.m., about uh, 56 degrees. We've got a torrential downpour of rain coming. But I'm out here on my walk. Uh, my goal is three hours a day, six days a week. Uh, that's what I'm doing in this season. Uh, Want to take off about 150 pounds uh, while maintaining muscle mass. Uh, and uh, yes, it's raining. Uh, it's chilly. It, you know, it's not super cold, but it's not comfortable. But life will always give you uh, an excuse not to accomplish your goal. Ladies and gentlemen, life will always make an offer for you to be common, to be uh, just, you know, uh, regular. But only the people who uh, are comfortable with being uncomfortable, the people that are okay with a little difficulty, uh, those few people are the ones that rise higher in life. See, a lot of people are always blaming God's will uh, which uh, lets me know that they haven't read their Bible in its entirety. And if they did, they need to read it again. When in fact, it is their own will or lack thereof, their lack of desire, their lack of self-discipline, uh, the lack of endurance uh, to keep pressing toward their goal that finds them in the situation that they are but the good news is that at any time you make a decision to find one of those promises in god's word and hold on to it until it is holding on to you Woo! then your life will change so today i wanted to talk to you about the second shiba inu confirmation uh, that I uh, feel led to share with you, at least. There's been lots of confirmations, but this is one I feel led to share with you. Um, if you are watching or reading along, I should say, on the uh, Telegram channel, the How to Be Healed TV Telegram channel, link in the description, uh, you know that I've been going through some financial uh, hardships. I don't know if you really could call it that, but what you can call it um, is that there's been some changes in my revenue stream. So about two to three months ago, um, I was one of my accounts uh, on one of the platforms. Um, it's not a video based platform. It's a text based platform it was uh, flagged down, uh, banned. And that's the one where I normally help people get those $100,000, $150,000 jobs in the tech industry. Um, and that reduced one of my income streams, right? So I normally uh, make resumes for people uh, walking in some water here. Let me get out of this water. Um, and then, you know, I have uh, or had a scrum master job, which is like a project manager job, bringing in an annualized uh, $154,000 a year. Everything was going fine. And I was transferred to another department. And, uh, you know, I was told that my contract would be extended. Uh, then my mom died. My mom passed. Uh, she passed from a avoidable, uh, reversible um, condition. And of course, you know, I'm not a financial advisor. This isn't financial advice. I'm not a doctor. It's not medical advice. And you need to ask God, all right, what you need to do concerning your finances and what you need to do to receive the healing that Jesus has already paid for you to have. All right, so my mom passed 
Um, and unfortunately, you know, some people would rather die. Uh, they would rather let the meat kill them, the disease kill them, the condition kill them, uh, than to do what God said to do on the first page of the book, Genesis chapter 129, where it talks about the fruits and the vegetables. Uh, they'd rather go see Jesus early than to dedicate every waking hour to reading healing scriptures and faith scriptures. All right, so it's not just my mom that has has that um, outcome. And uh, of course, when my mom uh, was fighting um, kidney failure a while back uh, and she was healed from that, that healing came uh, as she was getting into the word voluminously. Uh, as well as eating as many fruits and vegetables, juicing, smoothies, faith and works. Okay. Um, and of course, uh, as I said, she was healed uh, from a kidney failure. There's a part that we have to play. Jesus has already paid for our healing. All right. We have to receive it. The Bible gives us several, several ways, uh, about 12 ways to receive our healing. The uh, only way that does not require someone else uh, is uh, healing scripture reading. And then, of course, as you receive the healing of God, you don't want to keep putting a poison into your body that caused the, uh, the problem in the first place. Unfortunately, I've seen several cases where people refuse to change their diet, refuse to change their eating, and unfortunately, their body is in the grave, but we can be thankful that their spirit is with God. And of course, we know everything bad, Satan is to blame. So ultimately, Satan is to blame for my mom's passing. If you read John chapter 10, verse 10, essentially, if it's good, it's God. If it's bad, it's the devil. That's a really easy concept. That people spend lots of money to go to uh, so-called educational institutions to convince them otherwise. But there's been lots of other people that have done the same thing. Um, they won't do the faith in the works. The faith comes from God's word. All right. What God tells you to specifically to do. And it comes from um, doing, obeying what he tells you to do. Well, bang what's in his word and of course we can't keep putting dead animal carcasses in our body uh, and think that we're going to live a healthy life all right we need to be putting life in our body plants are alive animals are dead uh and if god didn't make it it's I mean, it's probably poison all right so we got all these processed foods junk food soul food all these things god didn't make but people think it's a good idea to eat. Um, and of course, I've read my Bible in its entirety several times. So I know all the scriptures that people use to justify eating meat. And, uh, you know, I am still learning. I don't know it all. But hey, if you, uh, if you like uh, putting dead things in your body, you know, I'm talking about meat. Uh, you, you know, that's your decision. Just make sure that you're living holy living righteous uh, so when judgment day shows up unfortunately maybe a little bit early for you uh, you'll have a good testimony before the Lord make sure you're forgiving everybody for everything they ever did to you okay hell is packed with Christians who just wouldn't forgive all right people who yeah they declare Jesus as Lord believe that God the Father raised his son Jesus from the dead but wouldn't forgive people the Bible says if you don't forgive you won't be forgiven of course, God can have mercy on whoever he wants to have mercy on, but, you know, the idea is not to create a, a, a sin spree, a crime spree, and then go up to the judge and say, hey, you got any of that mercy left? You got any mercy? Can I, can I get some of that mercy? All right. So make sure you're walking in the God kind of love. If you like eating uh, all of, I thought, I thought that was some kind of cat or something, but it wasn't. Uh, if you like... Uh, eating all that stuff that uh, you know has been proven not to be healthy make sure you are uh, doing good deeds 
Go read Matthew chapter 25. Jesus tell you in his own word what happens if you don't do uh, the things he says there, which are essentially good deeds. Go read it. Matthew chapter 25. All right. Um, and then I know people and, and I'm going somewhere with this, y'all. All right. Um, I know people who good people, godly people love the Lord, living right. And they know for a fact that the dairy, the, the milk, the cheese, the uh, ice cream tears their body up, but they would rather go to the hospital once a month and keep eating that poison. Oh, excuse me, excuse me. Keep eating that stuff, those ingredients that they know cause their body difficulty, all right, and just show up to the hospital every month. All right, that they, they, they got it on their schedule when they gonna go, okay? Because they know after a certain amount of time, you know, they're gonna have to go up there and get some treatment. All right, so, you know, we all have to be stewards of our body the best way we know how. But that being said, you know, the day after my mom passed, the scrum master contract job, they reneged. They, uh, they went back on their word. Okay. Um, so they said, okay, now you, you're not, uh, you are not, uh, extended on your contract. Okay. So, um, then, you know, uh, after that, my car transmission, you know, um, it basically went out. It could, the car would drive, but the, it was giving me a lot of problems and the problems were coming from the transmission. So my car has been stuck in the shop for about two weeks now. All right. Um, so that means I can't drive Uber. So let's go back. All right. The resume business gone. All right. Then scrum master job, which is like a project manager gone. $154,000 ending lives gone. All right. Then Uber. All right. Uber, depending on a lot of factors, what city you're in, things like that. We're talking about $350 a day, a uh, goal of that. So annualized, that's somewhere around, that's somewhere over or close to uh, $100,000. Gone. So I've uh, I had about 11 income streams. My top three income streams, uh, my top three income streams were, you know, uh, removed from me. All right, and of course, I know the people that don't like tithing, they, they say, oh, look, see, you tithe, and it didn't make a difference. But I want you to know, God still has been taking care of me financially. So all the thing I can do right now is live by faith, okay? I'm a go-getter. I believe in working all the jobs. At one time in my life, I had five different jobs. So I'm, I'm not a lazy person. I don't believe in depending on others. Uh, me personally, I believe in going out there and getting it out the mud if I have to. You know, legally and morally, of course. But what I'm trying to say is I'm a hard worker and I'm a smart worker. But one thing I learned is it's great to have 11 streams of income. It's more important. It's more important, ladies and gentlemen, to have streams of income that are passive that are automated, that if you can or cannot work, you still get paid, all right? That's important, all right? So what if you can't drive Uber because your car is uh, in the shop? You still need to get paid. What if uh, a supervisor snaps their finger? You don't ever met this person before. They email you one time uh, next day or next week, you don't have a job, all right? Uh, you've gotta have money coming in regardless of what you uh, do or don't do, all right? But if I can only live by faith, I'm gonna be the most wealthy, successful, and healthy person, natural person, living by faith that ever existed, all right? So whatever corner you pin me in, uh, however I'm pinned down, 
however I'm isolated, however bad the situation is, I'm gonna be the best person possible in that situation. Do y'all remember uh, when Joseph was a slave? You do know he was prosperous. The, the, the scripture says that he was a prosperous slave. How can a slave be prosperous? Ooh-wee. So I told you all all of that to tell you that I went to men's prayer at my church um, or the church that I attend and, um, you know, t uh, told the men what was going on and they began to pray for me and uh, they were praying that a, a place would be made for me. All right. And so one of the men there, he was uh, praying uh, the scripture in Genesis 26 and he was just talking about how everywhere um, that Isaac went, you know, those that uh, did not like him, they kept sabotaging him. They kept trying to tell him uh, what he could and couldn't do. They kept trying to make sure that he didn't prosper. Do you hear me? So, you know, uh, what I'm thinking is some of my competitors, my business competitors, um, that, cause he's, uh, essentially I help people get jobs. So there's a lot of job coaches out there. Uh, we're flagging my account. Um, even perhaps some people that posed as clients to get into different groups and they began, or su allegedly, reportedly, I suspect they began to flag from uh, my groups that I had created on this social media platform. Um, but he kept talking, the, the uh, gentleman at the prayer, he kept talking to me about how they kept trying to stop Isaac from being prosperous, being successful, okay? Um, and why were they trying to do that? Well, if you look at Genesis chapter 26, verse 12 through 15, it teaches us, then Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. The man began to prosper and continued prospering until he became very prosperous for he had possessions of flocks and possessions of herds and a great number of servants. So the Philistines envied him. Now the Philistines had stopped up all the wells which his father's servants had dug in the days of Abraham his father, and they had filled them with earth. So as you see, he sowed a seed. Now in this case, it was a physical seed, right? But we know that the word of God is seed. So when you're reading scripture, you're sowing that seed into your heart. All right, you can find that in Luke chapter eight, verse 11. And then he began to prosper and continue prospering until he became what? Very prosperous. So this is a, there's hundreds of scriptures about prosperity, financial prosperity. You know, people want you to be poor. They want you to be broke. They want you to be sick. And they're going to tell you that it's all God's will for you to lo live a losing life. Okay. But the scripture is your ticket out. My goodness. The scripture is your vehicle to greatness. My goodness. All right. So we see here that uh, they envied him because of all the great things that were happening to him. All right. And then they began to actively attempt to sabotage him. OK, now when he's telling me this, right, I already know that in Genesis chapter 26, what? What's in Genesis chapter 26 that has to do with the wealth transfer? Let's go ahead and read Genesis chapter 26, verse 32 through 33. Now, of course, I'm in the New King James Version. It came to pass the same day that Isaac's servants came and told him about the well which they had dug. And said to him, we have found water. 
So he called it Sheba. Therefore, the name of the city is Beersheba to this day. My goodness, my goodness, my goodness. Ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna prosper regardless of the situation, regardless of the circumstances, regardless of a uh, job or no job. I I've been in worse financial situations than I am now, and I'm not really in a bad financial situation. I just don't have the ability to generate money when I want to. Money's coming in. Uh, this We're toward the end of October. Over $12,000 has come in and uh, I know the IRS might be watching. Uh, this was not earned income, all right? Uh, and the majority, like only, just so y'all know, and it's fine, it, it doesn't matter to me, but many people are like, oh, well, you're getting donations. Not that many, not that much, a very small amount. But I do wanna thank the people who have donated, uh, who have sent their offerings, I appreciate you. But I'm not living off offerings, people. <laughs> I'm not living off offerings. Believe me. Woo, I'm, I'm out here trying to lose weight. My goal is two pounds lost a day. Walking three hours uh, a day. But I'm not living off offerings, people. Woo, I wouldn't need to walk because I already have all the weight loss. Woo. <laughs> um, what else did I want to tell y'all? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, tithing still works. Bring the prosperity scriptures work, but people would rather, you know, they'd rather be broke, financially broke, struggling, than to spend hours upon hours a day reading prosperity scriptures. Just the way it is. And hey, we've all got to be a good steward of our finances the way we see best. But hey, love y'all in Christ. I want to encourage y'all. That was the second confirmation that I feel led to share with you all that uh, Sheba will be our place. It will be a place of abundance for us uh, and that it will be a, a revenue stream, uh, a place of liquidity uh, for us. So love y'all in Christ. God bless you. With every blessing in Jesus mighty name. If you watch the video all the way to the end, go ahead and do it an emoji comment of a fox, which looks like a Shiba Inu dog. The fox emoji, uh, which look, looks like the Shiba Inu dog. But God bless y'all. If you can't fly, run. If you can't run, walk. If you can't walk, crawl, but by all means, keep moving.